Chris, what is our first main topic today? We are kicking things off with Eric Thomas. Obi-Wan Kenobi is out in less than 60 days. And thanks to the WGA, we now know who is writing the first five episodes of the show. And a name that sprung out to me was Andrew Stanton. Stanton is most famous for writing and directing Finding Nemo and Wally, -E, as well as co-writing all four Toy Story films. As a big fan of Stanton's work, the news that he co-wrote at least one episode of Obi-Wan Kenobi makes me really happy. What do you think about this? All right, thanks a lot for sending that in. And yeah, listen, I am a big fan of Andrew Stanton. I think the guy's great. I had the pleasure of meeting him uh, while they were doing press for John Carter, formerly known as John Carter of Mars. Also one of the worst advertised and marketed movies in film history for a movie that's actually really damn good. Yep. I really like John Carter that he directed. Of course, now he cut his teeth and got his fame doing stuff with Pixar. He wrote all four of the Toy Story films. He directed WALL-E. And I believe he wrote that as well. Uh, I think he directed Finding Dory. He did. If I'm not mistaken. But he's also done a lot of uh, television and stuff like that as well amidst, amidst all the things. In his director's credits, he's got, as we already kind of mentioned, uh, the Wally, -E, the, the various Pixar things. He also directed a little bit of Legion, the TV series. He's directed multiple episodes of For All Mankind, which is a show that all of us in this room like a lot. Uh, he directed some Better Call Saul. He's done a lot of that sort of thing. So the news coming out that they have got him to do at least some of the writing on Obi-Wan. I mean, as if we weren't or didn't already have enough reasons to be excited for Obi-Wan. Anyway, this comes from the folks over at Slash Film who write the following. They say this. Star Wars and Andrew Stanton, a popular fan choice to direct any number of Star Wars movies over the years, certainly feels like a match made in heaven. The director has previously cited the original movie and the overall franchise's influences on his work, such as Wally -E or especially John Carter. But after the latter film largely crashed and burned upon release in the theaters, because it was so badly marketed, almost exactly a decade ago, Stan has largely stuck to contributing to various Pixar animated movies, most recently Finding Dory and Toy Story 4, television shows such as Stranger Things, Better Call Saul, Tales from the Loop, and For All Mankind Included, and various documentaries. I'll tell you what, this was not a name I was expecting to hear brought up in the Obi-Wan writer's room. But the writers of Slash Home are completely correct. What a welcome name to there. Because he is a Star Wars fanatic, Andrew Stanton is. He's talked so many times over his career about the influence that Star Wars has had over the various projects he's worked on over the years. He's right at home in it. And listen, it's just one episode. From what, from what we know, it's just one episode that he wrote. But the very fact that he's writing and contributing to this overall narrative and story that we're getting, to me, is nothing but good news. I'm totally excited about this. Rob, you hear about Andrew Stanton. Number one, what do you think about Stanton in general, and what do you think about his addition to the writer's room here? Well, like you, I'm a huge fan of John Carter, and I think his animation work is wonderful. I mean, Finding Nemo, Finding Dory, and the Toy Story movies are some of the finest animated films ever made. Uh, and what's so great about them is character and story. The way he's able to establish characters and stories and in a fantastical environment, man, he makes you care about fish. You know what I'm saying? I mean, like you bring that kind of talent uh, into a Star Wars show. John, you know, when I rail against our favorite franchises, whether it's Star Trek or Star Wars, what I'm really asking for is great writing and great characters. That's it. That's the that's the beginning and that is the end of all of our favorite favorite franchises. All the other things can can be worked out. But character and story, that's the key to any great storytelling. And Andrew Stanton is a great storyteller. And for them to have uh tapped him to work on the show, come on, man. It can't it doesn't get much better. It really doesn't. Chris, you hear about this. When you look at the career of Andrew Stanton, what stands out to you? And what do you think about his addition to this uh, to this show? I love that he's being added to this because think of all of the wonderful moments he's brought us without dialogue and how much yeah. beautiful storytelling he does there. I mean, almost all of Wally. -E, you absolutely know how these characters feel about each other without barely any dialogue. It's yeah. incredible. Or that beautiful moment in Finding Nemo of the, when I'm with you, I'm home. That line Aww. that Dory delivers just crushes me every time I hear, and it's fish. It's fish. <laughs> oh, 
So having him on board makes me so, so happy because we are going to get back to, like Rob was saying, that beautiful, beautiful character work here. And that's what I want from the series, right? I know how things unfold in Star Wars. We've seen those movies, y'all. We're very aware of them. So I want to see how these characters are living in these moments in between. All right, guys. Question is for you. What do you think about Andrew Stanton being added to Obi-Wan that he has written one of the episodes we're getting? I, for one, am thrilled. Like, great. It's just one of the episodes. But still, I think this is great knowing that they have that caliber of talent being on this stuff. What do you think about Andrew Stanton? And where's your anticipation level for Obi-Wan right now? Whatever you guys are thinking, jump on down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. Guys, we want to take just a minute and thank the sponsor of this video, Masterclass. Masterclass is offering classes on a wide variety of topics, like all taught by world-class masters at the absolute tops of their field. Each class is broken down out into individual video lessons, usually like around 10 minutes or so long, and members can explore at their own pace. And each class is supported by downloadable materials, lessons, recipes, or more that you can all find at masterclass.com. For example, are you into streaming? Well, you can take the Building Your Streaming class taught by ninjas so you can sharpen up on your streaming skills. Or if you're interested in independent filmmaking, take independent filmmaking from Academy Award winner Spike Lee. You want to get classes on how to direct? How about from Ron Howard? The very first one I personally looked up and got into was Business Leadership by the great Big Papa Iger, Bob Iger himself. And I was absolutely in enthralled with it. I love every single minute of this stuff. If any of those apply to you, you need to try Masterclass. So I highly recommend that you check it out. Get unlimited access to every Masterclass. And as a John Campy Show viewer, you get 15% off an annual membership. Go to masterclass.com slash Campia. Once again, to get 15% off your annual membership, go to masterclass.com slash Campia. And a big thank you to the folks at Masterclass. No joke, guys. I love Masterclass. There's like I can almost play roulette with it. Close my eyes, go through whatever, <laughs> hit play, and there'll be something really cool to enjoy. Anyway, guys, check it out. And thank you to Masterclass for being a sponsor of the John Campia Show.